You know, we're talking about your words and your life. And that's why we have to sing songs that are word songs. Because it's like we're declaring, we're putting it in the atmosphere, we're putting it in our house. Sometimes we just let praise music pray, play in our house 24-7. Just to hold that. Why? I want it. And sometimes we let the word of God, the Bible, just play in the house. Why? There's power in the word. Wow, that's good. No limits. No limits. All right. Are y'all ready? Okay, let's, let's, let's get in agreement that pastor will have utterance. Let's get in agreement that you will have ears to hear what God speaks to you directly because he wants us to take the limits off. And, um, we, we, yeah. Father, we do thank you for this opportunity again to speak life to speak the word of God. We thank you for the privilege to study again. Jesus, you're Lord over this church, you're Lord over this service, and we submit ourselves to you and to you alone. And But we ask you, Heavenly Father, to open the eyes of our understanding so that we can see what you have for us today. We're not living on yesterday's manner, last week's manner. We need a fresh word today. And we thank you for it. We just prayed according to your will. You always hear us. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. I want to invite you or, or, and, and remind you about our Wednesday Bible study. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. I, I told him the other night, I said, I think, I'm, I think I'm preaching, teaching at another level. Well, I know I am because I'm, I'm at another level. Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm at another level. I'm not the same. I told you when this pandemic starts, I'm going to come out of this thing stronger, yeah. more anointed, uh, 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 more spiritual, yeah. more mature. Yeah, shoot. All right. Okay, we're talking about um, your words and your life. We've come a long way, and I trust that you're, you're not only just conscious of your word, but you're managing your words in a way that bringing forth uh, change in your life. And so um, let me review for just a minute. We said in James 3, he said that the, the tongue is like the bits of a horse, you know, the bits in the horse mouth, and you, you can turn the horse wherever you want to turn it, and it's like the um, rudder on a ship. And if we were writing that today, we say steering wheel, you know, how, how we can turn our lives wherever we want it to go. We can, he said, the, the pilot, wherever the pilot desire it to go, desires it to go, he said, the tongue is like that. So if whatever you need turning around or turned around in your life, whatever you need to be to turn uh, up right side up, your mouth is going to be involved. Amen. That's what the scripture tells us um, in James. And I told you before, I'm convinced that we've not given this subject the, um, the attention that we should have given it. Um, in Proverbs 18, 21 and 18, 20, he talks about life and death or in the power of the tongue, and they that love it, what you talk about the most, you're going to eat those words. You're going to eat those words. You, 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 if you're always talking defeat, always talking, uh, man, we can't catch a break. If you're always talking that, man, we take one step forward and two step back, you're going to eat those words. But if you're saying, man, God is so faithful, um, I don't know, I, I, it seems like every time I turn around, I'm back. <laughs> Every time I turn around, God is coming through for me. Amen. You know, man, it seems like when I don't know what to do, God shows me what to do. Amen. See, you keep talking that, guess what? You're going to eat those words. Yeah. And then James said, too, um, out of the mouth comes what? Blessing and cursing. And he said, man, it shouldn't be that way. What way should it be? What should be coming out of our mouth? And what? And what? And what? And what? Yeah, blessing should be coming out of my mouth. We don't do the curse thing. And he, and he talked about that, how he said we, we bless God, you know, 
wonderful service. And then before we, before we get to the car, <laughs> we bless. Did you see what so-and-so, you see what so-and-so had on? <laughs> and so now we're blessing and we're cursing folks, talking about, they, they, they bad kids. I don't know who, where them kids, well, okay, so, so we, we, uh, so we talked about that, how um, our words impacts our life, and we're going to talk some more about it. But today, we're going to talk. We're going to keep talking about it. But I want to talk about. And we talk about how we have to have words that work for us. Today, I want to talk about words that work for other people. Hallelujah. Words that works for other people. Words that work for people that you love, that you care about. Words that, um, uh, words that work for people that God put on your heart. Words that, 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 that work for, for your relatives, your in-laws, your outlaws, your, your everybody. Words that work for your drug addicted people people and works yeah. words that work for for wayward children you you know words that work for the grands words that work for the you know you, you get the picture because the God God is a good God and yeah. and what when God blesses us he always has more than us in mind he always has more God is good like that he bless, that's what no not Wednesday, I read that. In, in, in Corinthians, God, he said, I'll bless you with abundance and you'll have more than enough so you can be generous. Yes. Yes. God never finishes with us. Right. And see, we have to have the same agenda that Abraham had. Amen. His agenda was he was blessed right. to be a blessing. That's, right. that's got to be our agenda. That's, that's right. got to be why I want. That's why I want to walk in divine health. Why? So I can have the energy and the strength to go be a blessing to somebody else too. So, so, so we're learning about words and all that. And, and he talks about it in First Peter. You know, if you want to enjoy life and have a, a, a great life and all that, he said, he said, he said, you know, watch your word. And that's good. God wants us to enjoy our life. He wants us to enjoy what he blesses us with. Boy, uh, I bought my toy. I put my toy out last yesterday. No limits. Well, I was enjoying that thing. It's a car. It's a toy. A grown man ought to have a toy. A couple of them. At 65, you ought to have all the toys you need. Anyway, but, but, but I was like, God, I, I'm enjoying this joker. It was a little too cold to put the top down. But I was enjoying it with him. I want to talk to you today. Because I had a miracle this week. And so God said, I want you to share that. How many of y'all were here Wednesday night? Y'all remember I told you, golly. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of people here Wednesday. I told you about the, the young man who had to take his mom off life support. Well, they did. Okay, see, I had it all set up, how I was going to come at you with it. But see, y'all just listen to it. Anyway, they, they took her off, and um, she got better. <laughs> she got better, and, and so he called me yesterday, and uh, it's my nephew. He said, Unk. He calls me Unk. I don't like that. It's close to skunk, isn't it? But anyway, everybody got one of them uncles. I'm, I'm, I'm him. Yeah, everybody got a favorite uncle. That would be me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, y'all don't call me like you used to. Anyway, and, and God said, minister. I'm going to minister because words did that. Yes. Words did that. And, 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 but but I want to take you through this. Go to Isaiah 55. Woo! I told y'all I might go off. I just might go off. Right? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, how many know we're made in the likeness and image of God? 
Okay. And in Ephesians 5, 1, he told us to imitate our father. Didn't he say it? Y'all remember that? Okay. Take notes if you don't you think I'm making this up. Take notes and go look it up. But um, I want to read this out of the Message Bible. Oh, gosh. Thank you. I don't think, verse 8, I don't think the way you think is God talking to us. The way you work isn't the way I work. Verse 9, for as the sky soar high above earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Boy, okay, I, okay, let's keep going. I could park right here. Verse 10, just as the rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing the work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry. So will my words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. And I use that because we thought words are just to convey, you know, how I'm feeling, what I want, um, uh, instructions, how I want something done, and it does do that too. But words are more than that. They, 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 they do things. They, they're sent to do things and to accomplish things and to impart things. Words, yes. words. That's why this, this is so important. It's probably one of the most important things you can do after you get saved is to learn how to get your mouth together. He said, be slow to speak, quick to hear. Don't talk so much. Why? Because you're, you're releasing words. And don't listen to other people releasing words of death and words of doubt and words of fear. Cut them off. If they're on TV, hit the remote. Anyway, so, so, so our words, boy, our words, they go do things. Some of us are walking around with words that were spoken years ago, and they're still working on the inside of us. If you say some things to some people, I mean hurtful, damnable, curses, if you say something to some people and they're still living, go back, re repent before God, and go back and say, hey, I need to overwrite those words. You are lovely. You're awesome. God's got a good future for you, buddy. Yeah, I don't care what anybody says. I know they said that, but but uh, listen, listen, override, listen. Well, you know, and then if some things were said to you, don't wait for somebody to come. You override them. All right. So, so we want to develop to the place that when we say things, we expect those words to work. Glory to God. We expect those words to have an impact. We expect those words to impart. So I want to um, I want to talk about that. Let's go to I, I want to show you a couple of things that Jesus did. Go to Luke chapter four, please. Oh, we're gonna send our words, and we we started that last couple of weeks ago. Let's send our words to do something. Now, I don't have to be there for my words to work. Words work like a guided missile, man. You, you release that missile, it's got a little computer in it, and you just tell it where to go. That's how, you ever watch, well, it's probably kind of crude. Anyway, you know, how government, they, they bomb places, and, and they show the, the video, how that thing, bam! Okay, I'm sorry, I get a little, I get a little animated there. But, but like a missile, but your words are like that. I talked to a gentleman um, the other day, coach out there in California, and he said, man, I, I, my son, I, I don't know if my son's dead or alive. I, I, he, won't, he won't call me. He won't. I said, well, what what'd you do to him? He said, I don't know. I don't do nothing. He just, he acted like I'm dead. He's dead to me. I said, well, you can send some words. Those words will find him. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, no, no, those words will find him and shake him, and he'll get, I got to call my daddy. I got to call my daddy. Guess what? He got a text the other day. He said, man, I heard from my son. 
He said it was just a text, but I I take that right now. Okay, like on, okay, on Wednesday we talking about patience, but see, see, everybody wants the the voila, but the, Jesus said first the blade, then the ear, then the corn. See, any little progress lets you know it's working. Give God time. Let God work that thing. Okay, all right, all right. So your word, your word for the, your, your your word will do that. But today I'm focusing on my words helping others. And I'm going to tell you, the, I'm going to give you the details of the testimony in a minute. But words did that. And so there's going to be impact in here today. There's going to be impact out there today. Hallelujah. See, remember I told you, you know, when you start talking out both sides of the mouth, you, you, you're impeding your progress. Right. Your word, it, you, you have more to say about the progress of your life than, than the devil and even God. Because he put he put the ability and the power in your hand. Yes. All right, all right. Luke chapter four, verse thirty-eight. You find it? Well, you can look up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me. I'm sorry. I, I know. I knew this was gonna happen. I'm all over. But look up, please. I want y'all to see my lip moving. Y'all know I love you, and that's why I gotta. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I give you my best stuff, man. I give you my, but you don't get no warmed over, you know, got a microwave. You get my best stuff, okay? That's all I got. I'm going to give you my best stuff. If I got to step all night to fix it, I'm going to give you my best stuff. And sometimes I have to. But anyway, because y'all, y'all a tough crowd sometimes. <laughs> I love y'all, though. I love y'all. I love y'all. Man, you don't even know. Yeah. Why did I say all that? I must have been getting ready to say something kind of tough, huh? <laughs> okay, yeah, I did. I, that's true. You know, you are going to have to identify everything in your life that numbs you. Like, oh, that song was perfect. That numbs you to believing that God can do anything. That numbs you to putting limit on God. Well, I know God can do that, but God can't do that. Whatever, whatever is numbing you to to the um, to the ability of God, to the power of the Word, to the to the miracle uh, nature of God, whatever is numbing you, whatever whatever's got you now, numb you now to where you're not even excited about God. You need to identify that. You need to deal with that. Okay. See, this is not the time to be to be casual about God. Yeah, see, see, it's amazing. All this stuff, all this. Calm down, friendly. Calm down. Okay. All this stuff happening in the world, and you can be casual about God. You all you gotta do is pay attention. It's like, man, something going on. That's beyond me. That's bigger than the government. It's bigger than. Okay, this is the time. You need to be in the book. You need to be in the scriptures. You need to you need to be 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 laying aside every weight. I'm not talking about sin, but the weight too. Sin is a, is a given. Whatever is numbing you, I, I, I used to read. I don't read now. Well, you need to deal with that. Because this is the church's finest hour. It is, yeah, because where sin abounds, yeah. grace, go, God ain't going to let the devil, it's, well, let me say, where sin abounds, grace does what? Much, Much more. more. God is not going to let the devil outdo him. And for people that's committed to God and diligent to God, we talked about it Wednesday, he said, be not sluggish or lazy spiritually. For those that will be diligent, you're going to see manifestation, notable miracles. You're going to see stuff just like, whoa. And it's going to become, it's going to become commonplace. Yeah. God has to do that because, yeah. because some people think the devil is running this thing. That he's got an upper hand. It's so bad. Quit, say, quit saying that. Quit, quit. You're playing right. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a big play in the devil's book. Yeah. You're running his plays. Somebody do that. Okay, let me get back to it. 
Don't do it again, though. <laughs> ah! Whew. Okay. But that, that's the way it is. God can save your baby. He can deliver your child. I don't care what, I, man, you, yeah, shoot. He can deliver your, your daddy. He can deliver your wife. My brother, tell me, man, my, my wife, my wife using, man. I don't even know where she at. I'm here with this baby. She out using. God can pull her back and deliver her. But you got to give God something to work with, bro. I know you're watching. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Can God do stuff like that? Yes. So we're taking the limits off. Boy, that may become my theme song. Then you got to act like it's already done. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me, let, me, let me teach. Luke chapter 4, you birthed there? You birthed there. Jesus. Say, slow down, bro. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Luke chapter 4, verse 38. I just want to give you a couple of scriptures and then go into what I want to say, talk about. Uh, verse 38. Now, he, he, Jesus, arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. How many of y'all been to uh, Jerusalem? I know, I know Paul and say, did y'all go, did y'all go to Peter's house? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I guess that's, they take everybody there, huh? So, so that really, we've been at, the Peter's house is about 90 feet away from the synagogue. So they, they just walked out and went straight into Peter's house. The escape, okay, I'm not getting all of that, but, but you read about it. So I know where this is. This is, this is for real. I think it's for real. That's what they told us. Huh? <laughs> that's what they told us. Anyway. Yeah. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered into Peter's house. Uh, that was in Capernaum. But Peter's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. Now this is Dr. Luke talking. Dr. Luke is writing this. And so he's talking about a fever that was causing her to be delirious and, and almost, you know, deadly. Uh, uh, and they made a request of him concerning her. Verse 39. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. What did he do? <laughs> what does that mean? He said something to it. He didn't give her a Tylenol. And Tylenol's okay. He rebuked the fever, and what happened? It left her. Oh, and immediately she arose. You know, you got a severe fever. You're going you're gonna to be you know, drowsy for a couple of days. And immediately she arose and served them. Now, the message Bible said he stood over her and told the fever to leave, and it left. Before they knew it, she was up getting dinner ready for her. That's what, that's what the message said. I have a question. Can fevers hear? Huh? It's not a trick question. It's like the answer's in the, in the Bible. It's in there. Can fevers hear? Hmm. He spoke to it and the fever left. So fevers can hear. Can arthritis hear? Yes. Can high blood pressure hear? Yes. Can sugar diabetes hear? Yes. Hmm. Well, I, I just I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, you know. Blood clots can hear. Yep, they're here. What do you believe happens when you speak? You gotta believe that what you say comes to pass. We're gonna talk more about that. Uh, uh, go to Acts 16. You don't have to. Uh, go, yeah, go to Acts 16. Eight. That's okay. Yeah, go there. Go there. Go there. Hallelujah. This was a, a fortune telling girl, Miss Cleo's cousin, <laughs> was over there with Paul. And uh, she's fortune teller. And Paul, uh, verse 18, said, Greatly annoyed, turn and say it to the spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus 
to come out of her, and he came out when? So he said to the spirit. So we, we, fevers can hear, arthritis can hear, cancer can hear. Spirits can hear. I got so many rabbit trails popping up right now. Okay. So, so, <laughs> words that work. Okay. Now, um, no, I'm not even, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to be okay. Your words can work. Examine what comes out of you. How many of you took the challenge, I, I, I teched out, uh, 20, the 24 hour challenge and I said listen for 24 hours can you just sit, don't say anything negative critical and and watch how you just feel better I, I, I can give you another one it's a major one don't watch any any newscasts for for two or three days you fit, you'll see peace in your house you're just like wow what is this because you're putting those negative vibes out there it's it's real but with your words you can either comment or you can change stuff. Hallelujah. Now that was worth combing your hair and coming to church for right there. Wasn't it? <laughs> well, Kevin, I want you amen and so loud for. <laughs> my man, that's my man right there. I, just, I had fun with him. <laughs> but no, you can either comment or you can change stuff. And I think if we can get to the point where we just think we got to have to be heard so much. We don't have to be heard. Oh, this is good. Just hold that. Amen. First of all, most of the time, no one's even asked you. <laughs> they didn't even ask you. If they didn't ask you, hold it. <laughs> I'll never forget reading, uh, well, Miles Monroe said this. He said, uh, listen, when your grown kids get married, they don't need nothing from you, especially advice, <laughs> unless they ask for it. Don't just barge in there and tell them what they need to do. He said, that's what, the best way to push them away from you. I'll never forget that. I got two way men on that deal. <laughs> okay, now, okay, now, I want you to go to, uh, uh, go to Matthew 8 and then Luke chapter 6. Because what I want to do now, there's three accounts found in the gospel where Jesus healed people from afar. In other words, they were not there. I just want to look at two of them. Um, you know the scripture, but I want to look at them. Because these two were at the point of death. Thank you, Jesus. And Matthew chapter 8 Verse 5, it's the centurion, common, very common story. Um, now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, that's the same place where Peter's house is, uh, a centurion came to him pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Okay, now drop down to verse 13, please. And then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way as you have what? So be it done for you. And the servant was healed that same hour. This man was a boss, employer, and he had concerns for his employee. And so he came to Jesus on behalf of his employee who was somewhere else. And Jesus was willing to walk down there. But he said, Jesus, you don't, even have to, you don't even have to do all that. You don't even have to do all that. Because your words are powerful enough to go afar. See, see, distance is not a barrier for God. I'm going to say that again. Distance is not a barrier. For, it's a barrier for us, but it's not a barrier for him when we take the limits off. 
So I'm talking about, I'm talking about what the barrier. See, there may be, I don't know where those folks are. They can be where, listen, it doesn't matter. God word. This is what we got to believe, y'all. This is why we have to believe. That's why we got to divorce our stuff from stuff that numbs us from believing God. Amen. John, John chapter four. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. John chapter four. Now this is where um, um, an official son came to Jesus. Um, <sighs> you still with me? Okay, don't leave me now, Lucille. <laughs> John chapter 4, verse 46. Uh, Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. So now here's a father coming to him about his son. Um, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, unless people see signs and wonders, you will by no, mean, no means believe. And the noble man said, <laughs> I like this, the noble man said to Jesus, uh, sir, um, uh, can you come down before my child die? I can, I can picture, he probably saying, okay, Lord, Jesus, you can come back and preach to them later. I just need you to come to the house right now. You know how we get impatient. They need to hear my sermon on patience. <laughs> and so verse 50, Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the what? The word. The word. See, that word is powerful. Words are containers. They carry love, joy, peace. They carry faith. They carry curses. He believed that what? Word. He didn't have to see it. He believed the word. Verse 51, and as he was going down, the servant met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better, and they said to him, well, it was yesterday at the seventh hour. The fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that same hour in which Jesus had said to him, your son lives. He himself believes and his whole, watch this, and his whole household. He saw the power of God. He believed Jesus and the whole household came in. And each of these examples, person got here. Do you find yourself in any one of those positions as a, as a father or as a boss? Do you have employees that, you know, you're concerned about? You know, they, they come in there. You know they own something. And you're concerned about them? Or you have a son that you're concerned about? This right here gives us hope. Amen. It gives us hope. The power of God. Like I said, um, um, Jesus healed from afar. Distance is no barrier for him. All right. I got a call Wednesday. Um, well, actually, when I woke up Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> I didn't wake up Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> when I woke up Wednesday, <laughs> I, uh, I had a text. And I said, uh, man, they're going to take, they're calling me to see about, you know, I'm my only child to take mom off the life support. And he said, you know, she already made a wish known, and, um, but I just can't fix my mouth to say that. Mm. Well, okay. And so anyway, the day went, Wednesday went by, and so by the time I you know, we're four hours difference, you know. This is 4,000 miles away. And so by the time I got home from service, uh, I had a text that, you know, we, they, they unplugged everything. Wow. And so, um, no, 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 they were going to unplug Thursday, Thursday, yeah the next day and so I'm thinking whoa and so you know we we have a little ritual we we do every morning and so I told her I said I, I just need to go 
get with God. About to, this is my nephew, mother. I need to go get with God. She said, okay. And so I'm talking to God about this thing. And I don't remember what all I said, but I do remember a portion of my prayer. And you might, this may be a value to you. I said, um, Father, I don't know what her will is. Her will? What about God's will? I said, Lord, I don't know what her will is. I know what God's will is. God said, it, it, he, he, his will is that none should perish. But he said, with long life, I'll satisfy you. Didn't he say it? Yeah. But watch this. I said, Lord, I don't know what her will is. I don't know if she's satisfied. She's only 50. 50, excuse me. Uh, I don't know if she's satisfied. Some people, if you're satisfied, take off. Yeah, if you're satisfied at 40, sorry, now. If that's what you want. But if she's not satisfied, if she has a will to live, and she's in the coma now, if she has a will to live, Pastor Friendly been preaching about these words. I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I, it was something to the fact that in the name, I didn't pray, I prayed to ask God about if it's not his will. Because, it, it, yeah, because it's her will. But I remember praying that, but then I started commanding life to come back into that body. Um, that she's supposed to be getting a, a transplant, uh, a, a kidney and a liver transplant. And, and they said, oh, that's definitely off the table. Because she, as soon as we said, she's going to die. She, she wouldn't even make it through the operation. So I started speaking life to her. I started sending the word. I said, Lord, you said one, Psalm 107, 20, you sent the word and healed them and delivered them. I'm going to send the word, heal them, and get her delivered in Jesus' name. Well, yeah, that and I went on about my business. And, uh, and so <laughs> got, a, got a call Thursday night. Text, text, text. Unk, she's bouncing back. I'm like, well, praise God. She said, Oh my God, I mean, he was, he was like crushed. And, and, that's, and that was some other things he said, I'm gonna use that for another sermon. About how he treated his mama. We ain't gonna talk about that today. Maybe Mother's Day. <laughs> Maybe that's a Mother's Day sermon. You better treat your mama right. Anyway, and so, um, and so he said, man, he, she, she bounced him back. And so, I like what well, praise God I said, man. That's, that's the power of prayer. He said, it's got to be. It's got to be. Because cause everybody, it was over, everybody. So he called me yesterday. And that was Friday. I may have my days mixed up. But he called me yesterday. And this is what he said. Uncle, I just got off FaceTime with her. And he said, my God, she looks so pretty. She got makeup on and everything. And he said, I haven't been able to talk to her. And he hadn't physically seen her in over a year. Aww. Yeah. Because of this COVID, this doggone, almost make me want to cuss when I bring that up. <laughs> this doggone COVID thing. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but so, 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 now I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Why does it work sometimes? But I was telling Deb coming in because I, I told her what I was going to talk about. And then I, I was reminded, this same thing happened in 2005. From my father. Now, me and him, our relationship was about that long. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, that's about how, how it was. It was. It wasn't a relationship, but I got saved, and I, I realized, okay, if I'm a preach, if I'm a preacher, I gotta live this. Amen. So I didn't reach out. That's a long story. Maybe I talk about that on Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> but they called up my son. He, he tell you. Um, they gave. They said, "Hey, hey, he done. Y'all need to come home. He, he, he's out of here. He, meant he not gonna make it through the night." Well, we were in uh, St. Louis at the Final Four. A bucket list thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, we can't leave the Final Four. <laughs> and I told him, yeah, I said, I said, son, we gonna have, you, 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 you seen a couple of miracles. We gonna see a big one. God is good. So anyway, prayed. Guess what happened? 
God healed him. I don't even know what he had. But he, he, he lived on and to, to eight. You know, it's amazing how some folk can live long like that. And anyway, he, he died at 80. He lived on to be 87. He was good. And they started calling him Miracle Sam. Because that word went from St. Louis to Youngstown, Ohio, like a guided missile. And I don't even, I don't even remember what was wrong with it. But it don't matter. God raised him up. What I'm trying to tell you is we need to believe God. And we need to put stuff into motion and not be, not be. It's amazing. We talk about so many other things. We talk about people instead of blessing people. Yeah, we want to criticize them. They do this. They do that. They don't do this. They don't do Why don't you release something that's going to help people? All right. So anyway, um, now, you know, I don't know how long she's going to be. I just know, I just know, he said, man, I had talked to my mom and, and she's been in a coma. Now, is that a coincidence? What is it? A am I special? Watch it, watch it, watch your mouth. No, somebody will say, well, I'm not a preacher. I can't do that. But you're a reacher. This is not just for preachers. This is for, this is, this is, this is part of our, this is a part of our, of our um, armor. There's people in your life. There's people in my life. There's people, there's people that, that's on our radar, but they're not on the radar. There's some people, some, some, some of us have given up on some people. Who gave you the right? Who gave you the right to give up on somebody and say who's not going to come, who's not going to turn around? I'm going to think, show you something in a minute. To give you the right to like, well, you know, they'll never. They said that about you. I remember they just said it about you. I said, leave him alone. He'll come around. He'll come around or he'll go to heaven. Amen. We're so quick to sentence people because of something they did or are doing at the moment instead of sending words. That will wake them up in their night season and, and something hit them like, okay, you know what, let me, I need to get, let me get out of here. Girl, listen, girl, I, I'm done, I'm done. What do you mean you're done? I'm done. I ain't come on, I'm going back home to my wife. Instead of, we want to gossip and reinforce. See, see, words are like, Words are like building. I, I would tell people when we have the baby blessing. Now, don't just let the blessing stop here. Keep building that wall, brick yes. on brick every day. Build that, build that. And then when you're done with the baby, do that. Tell your wife, hey, baby, build that, build that, build that. All right. How are we doing? Thank you, Lord. So God is not done. Now, what I want to do, so you may not have anybody on life support you're dealing with, but you may have somebody in your life that's, again, not walking with God or, or, or something got the best of them. Uh, you, ever, you ever, and I know, God, dog. Uh, can you imagine what it's like you on your way to work and you see your daughter out on the corner holding a sign for food. Yeah. Well, she wasn't my daughter. She used to be my church member. She's family I love dearly in this church. That's where their daughter was. And I can't imagine that. But instead of putting energy in my God, she had a great home. How could she give all that up? That's not what she needs. And we have word and power and prayer that can help them. 
I want to I want to go through something real quick. Thank you, Lord. Again, that's why I'm pounding the table. I'm pounding the table on in this hour to be spiritually uh, connected, not to be spiritually lazy, not to be spiritually casual. There's people, and see, I, I, I said this years ago, I don't know if it's true or not theologically, but I like it. Um, see, sometimes God lets you see scenarios in people's lives, not so you can text somebody, God, guess what I just saw? But no, so you can go to a room and get on your knees, perhaps, and, and, and tell God what you saw. All right. I want to go through this kind of quick. I, I want to do maybe a whole thing on it, but how to, how, to, uh, how to approach loved ones in your life or people you care about, how to, how to pray for them, how to stand for them, how to approach them, how to get them off of, they may be addicted to whatever, how to get them off of that, how to, how to cause the light to shine to them, just like it shined to us. Y'all remember that? Amen. You know that wasn't just you, right? Okay, you know you weren't all of that. There's somebody somewhere, that's how the old preacher used to say it, somebody somewhere <laughs> called your name out before God. Somebody, somewhere. See, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Pastor, how do you how do you pray for loved ones to to be saved or to be delivered from the control of the enemy? Well, first of all, what's keeping them from receiving God? Uh, I, I didn't bring the Second Corinthians chapter, First Corinthians chapter four, verse four says the uh, the God of this world blinds their mind. You ever say? Can't they, can't they, what? Can't they see what they're doing? Can't they see how this is destroying them? Can't they see? Let me help you with that. No. They can't see. There's a devil, his, his, 1 Corinthians 4, 4, who has an assignment, he blinds the mind. They can be, the, the U-Haul or the, the repossession truck can be backing up, taking all that stuff. Can't they see? No. Wipe out for divorce. Can't they see? No. Lost their job. Now that they have to go to the food pack. Can't they see? No. Blinded. Blinded. The Bible said they're blinded by the God of this world. They're blinded. They they may want, but they may know about better. They, some of them, we may have raised them up in the things of God, and somehow they they went left. They know, they know, but they're blinded. They they want to come out, but they're blinded. I want to be a better parent, but I'm blinded to it. I think I still gotta have some fair ribs. I'm blinded. It's so, you know, I still want to act like I'm 25. I'm 70. I still want to act like I'm, why? I'm blinded. Amen. It's a spiritual thing. It's not them. It's the devil that's got a hold on them. Amen. So what do you do? Well, first thing you do, the first thing you do, the Bible says you cannot, if you're going to, if you're going to fall a man's house, you got to go after the strong man. You got to go after the one that's controlling this thing. It, it ain't him. It ain't her. It ain't you. Yeah, he need to lead them people alone. Well, that may be. May be. But it's the strong man that we're dealing with here. Are y'all with me? Yeah, Jesus said, you bind the strong man and then go get your stuff. So you have to on purpose. Take, you know, we talked this a couple weeks ago, a month ago, about the authority. And it's, it's something like this. In the name of Jesus, devil, demons, whatever, you take your hands off of them. They, they belong to me, or what, you know, whatever, and they belong to me, and I bind your activity off of their lives. Come out of there. Father, go, 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 go. I, I, I pray this a lot because, you know, folk, when folks sleep, they start having dreams. Well, I had a dream the other day. 
I was like, all right. It was a, it was a giant bust, a giant raid bust. And I'm like, and, and you know, this, this, some stuff just makes me mad. But, it was, but this one, this dream was good. And I, could, I normally don't remember them, but it was a giant bust of, of all these people just kidnapped these kids, this kid trafficking. And I mean, it was, it looked like it was at the Sullivan. And, and it was, but it was a giant bus and all these people. And so, so law enforcement, they, they paraded these, the uh, offenders out and more folks, folks wanted to kill him. Folks, folks wanted to kill him. One guy, One guy walked up to one. We in church, huh? Did y'all eat? <laughs> you didn't eat? Okay, I won't, I won't say it. But we got a few more minutes. Y- your stomach could come back. <laughs> they had all these, all these defenders up there, right? And one guy walked up with a blowtorch. I know, right? I know. Y'all want me to stop? No. He walked up with a blowtorch. And he, he burnt the man's face off. That's how, that's how vile that is, what they were doing. Now, I don't, I wouldn't do that. But he burnt the man's face. That's how evil, evil it was. How did I get on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, my wife be paying attention. Yeah, yeah, so one of the things I pray, Lord, get, this happens too. Lord, get in their dreams. Get in their dreams and, and, and scare the hell out of them. You talk like that to God? Yeah, we talk like that. I'm his son. And, and we have Bible precedents for that. There were some people that came to themselves because when, when, they knew it was God. So... So, so 2 Corinthians 4, 4 said he blinds the minds. I said 1 Corinthians, didn't I? Okay, it was 2 Corinthians. See, the spirit is operating. Say, Lord, this spirit that's operating in their life, I'm binding it now. Amen. I bind you. And you talk to it. Especially if you know what it is, you talk to it. Yes. Now, now let me say this. Now, your words have power. Your words have power. But your words can't make them do anything against their own will. Okay? I had to learn that. Yeah, yeah. Your words can't make them do anything against their will. They have to get to the place where they decide. Because if that was the case, we had everybody saved in in church and tithing. But, 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 But here's the deal. Your words can snap that stuff off of them. Here's the deal. They have to decide to walk out. So as fast as you get them free, they can step right back in there and get tangled again. So, so it's a project. So don't be alarmed. It's a project. They can get saved. You, I mean, deliver and, and you can say and deliver and, and say go right back in it. And so, so sometimes this is why sometimes people have to pray years. This is why they have to pray years because it, it's their will. Amen. It's their will. They just, I, I want this. I know I don't, I shouldn't, but I want this. And so, but you keep the prayer on them. You keep the power on them. You keep the words on them. Amen. Father, I thank you. My, my children are walking in the glory of God. They're following the plan and the purposes of God. You keep that on. Angels are camped around and about them, keeping them in all of their yeah. ways. No evil shall be fallen. No plague comes to them. You keep that word around them. Don't you ever say, that's so stupid. I can't believe they're doing that. I, I don't understand. That's not for you to say. That's not to, we don't say that. Amen. Say faith. faith. Okay. And so after you do that, then you pray. I mean, you can cast them out. And fast you cast them out, they can reel them back in. But then you pray, Lord. Because, see, people don't get, pray, don't get saved by prayer and intercession. What? People don't get saved by you just praying for them. People get saved by hearing the word and receiving. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, by the word of God. They have to hear something about salvation. 
So Jesus said, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are what? So now you got to pray, Lord, will you send a laborer to them? Someone that they'll relate to, someone that's equipped with the word of God that will minister to them. Because it's the word, it's the word that penetrates all of that facade and goes straight to their heart and causes them to say, I want Jesus. Amen. So he sends laborers across their path. And, um, and, and, and that's, that's a major, major, major thing. And so I, the reason I'm pounding the table so much on, on and I'm going to do it. I mean, you know, you might want to go find another place to go to church or whatever, but we're in these last days. I can't back up and do what's, what, what I think I ought to do. Or what. <sighs> this is a spiritual connection. I'm encouraging those of you that kind of backed up this, you, you got convinced that you don't need to do this, get back on it. Don't, let, don't, don't, don't become numb to this. Become a fanatic again. I mean, you know, I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> we would have got the uh, a couple of weeks ago. We was in the Cheesecake Factory. You ever been to Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. That menu, something else, ain't it? Yeah. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't. I'll be taking me 75 minutes to decide what I want. <laughs> Just read the thing, it's so big. But he was at the Cheesecake, we was in the Cheesecake Factory. Pastor, he a pastor, a friend of mine. And we were walking out after five hours. <laughs> That's no exaggeration. We were in there five hours, weren't we? And we were walking out, and he stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm like, oh my God, what is this girl doing? <laughs> now, I ain't seen him, you know, I ain't seen him in a few years. I didn't know. I was like, oh man, because he sounded good at the table. He sounded good at the table. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, God has not given us, I mean, he's telling them, everybody stop. The music went everybody. I'm thinking, man, they're going to pull him out of here. They're going to put him in a straight jacket or something. Ladies and gentlemen, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power. I'm like, hurry up. <laughs> and a sound mind. Be of good cheer. God is not giving you fear. That's the devil. I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, we're in a, okay, don't say that. It was just a couple of us in there, you know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man, I ain't even from here. <laughs> Is that the truth? Is that, am I telling the truth? I'm like, okay, dog. That was different. What did I say? Oh, fanatics. <laughs> okay, let me close this. If, if the idea of you changing and, 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 and managing your words or changing your life, if the idea of doing that seemed too far out for you, don't do it. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for your children. Amen. Do it for those that, that's on life support. Do it for them. Do it. See, make this thing bigger than you. Do it for the generation that's watching you. Do it for the folks that work, that's at work, that know you're a Christian and you go to the lighthouse. Do it for them then. If you don't want to do it for you, do it for somebody else. Do it for your grandchildren. Do it for your neighborhood. Do it for God. If you don't want to do it, if you, I don't want to go through all that, well, don't do it for you. That's one of the things, man, with this generation, I'm concerned about the parents. Like our generation, we sacrifice and we, we give up everything so they can have. This generation, I mean, I love y'all, not, not the people here. I ain't, talking about, I ain't talking about the people here. I mean, my, my wife could have had, she could have had several jobs making more, way more money than me. Way more. We needed it too. <laughs> she said, no, no, I ain't taking that job because that's going to take me away from my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
Hey, <laughs> it's the truth. But, but God told me. But God, God rewarded. He said, no, because you put my will first. Now, I'm not saying if you work, that, you know, that's, that's, yeah. But I'm telling you what God told us. Because you did that and put that first. I'm going to bless your life. Now, he made up for it. So, so if, it, if this ain't about you, if, if you don't want to do that, fine. Do it for somebody else. Do it for somebody else. Do it for your brothers and sisters. Do it for your, for your mama. Do, do it so your mama can have some peace when she go to G- see Jesus. Do it so the devil can understand, I'm not the one to be played with. I am not the one. And we take authority and devil, uh-uh. You know, it, it weakens, you know, it, for my house to be full of strife, it weakens our spiritual power. How you going to not get along? How you going to not get along? And even, even in this church, there's people, it, it, houses of God all over the place, there's strife, it's people, I'm not budging, I, I ain't budging. And what happens is, unless somebody checked that, it, it weakens the spiritual authority in this house, on this stage, in, 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 in your house. So we want to, see, we, I'm back to spiritual authority, but it's in our words. Your words and your life. Did you get something out of what today? Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Do it for somebody else. Do it because somebody else needs you. There's somebody watching you. There's somebody listening to you. They, they, they may be undercover. You don't even know it. I, I'm telling you, I know that's the truth. I, yeah. Father, we thank you. Come on. I, I, I really want, okay, we're going we're gonna to pray today, but I'm really feeling. Man, let's go after our families. Let's go after our brothers. Let's go after our siblings, our brothers. Let's go after our parents. Some of our parents are tripping. Let's go, let's go after it, man. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. yeah. Let's go after our grown kids. Yeah. Let's not just settle for that. They're going to be all right. Well, you know, they're good kids. I know they're good kids, but good kids go to hell. We don't want good kids in the hands of the devil. We don't want good kids struggling and suffering because of, of stuff. Amen. Let's pray, and then we're out of here. Father, whoo, we did our best. And now I commend them to the word that they heard today. I believe it will not return void. I believe that you're lighting a fire. You're igniting a fire that you're rekindling some things that we've allowed to slip. Some things have come in and numbed us to what's really happening. We've gotten focused on some of the wrong things the pleasures of life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things to a point where our vigor and vitality and urgency with the spiritual things, because we're not in crisis right now. We just stepped into cruising. Father, I ask you to stir this church up. I'm calling this church a, a church that's awake. Talk about a woke situation. I'm calling this a church that's woke to the power of God, to the anointing of God, to the authority of God, to the power of word. We're woke. Devil, we're woke. I know you're going to try some stuff, but you can't win. You cannot win. It's uh-uh. So, Father, I ask you to help us, all of us, judge ourselves. And most of all, make the corrections that you would have us to make. I pray that in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the revival that's happening. Because there's a lot of good stuff happening in here with people. We thank you for the revival that's taking place even now. And that's going to grow and grow. And we, this church, we're all going to come out of all of this stuff better. It's not even going to be a, uh, it won't even, we won't even have to blink. Because you're doing so many awesome things. And we understand we're blessed to be a blessing. This word today, bless me, but now I can go and be a blessing to somebody that doesn't know this stuff. So we bless you. Now, if you're here listening to me, either online or in this building, and you're not born again, listen, God is not mad at you. Jesus has tore down 
He tore down the wall of partition. He, he bore your sins in, in his body. He bore the curse that separated you from God. He, he took it all on himself so that you can be in relationship with God. God is reconciling the world to himself. He loves everybody. Even that cop that got uh, guilty, found guilty three times. You know, I, he should be held accountable. He should probably spend life in prison. But God loves that. Jesus died for him too. Hallelujah. So we pray that he come to the Lord, play for his family, his children. Listen, God he said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not like yours. And he said, come on up here to where mine are. It's a whole different realm. It's a whole good realm. If you're here today and you're not born again, it doesn't matter what you've done. God is still reaching to you. And he's talking to you right now through me. He's been talking to you. But he just said, like I said earlier, it's your will. It's your decision. I can't make you do anything. God can't even make you do anything. I'm asking you to choose life choose life. If you're here and you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, one of the things you need to do, I, I didn't mention this, but I, I don't know, I prayed a long time in other tongues over that situation that I told you about. The Bible said when you don't know what to pray as you ought, the Holy Spirit will help you pray the perfect prayer. It's hard to bless somebody that's hurt you at a, at a deep level, but you can do it in tongues. You can do it with other tongues. Father, I thank you so much for that gift. So if you're here and, and you're born again, you can receive that gift today. We want to help you receive today. We want you to receive today. You need it. It's not an optional. You need it to navigate the world which, which you live in right now. And then the last thing is uh, for church membership. I'm, I believe that your association, the law of association, has a lot to do with where you go in life. And as a believer, every spiritual believer needs a church and they need to be planted in the church. The Bible says those that are planted flourish. So you'll flourish here because I, I like I said, I, I'm gonna bring, bring you my best stuff. Every, every time I'm up here in this pulpit or on the video, you're gonna get my best stuff. I'm called to this, I'm committed to this, I've given my life to this. This is what I'll do until I check out of here and I want God to be pleased with me so you don't have to worry about it on this end my 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 question to you is can you commit and I know it's hard nowadays it's hard for a lot of people because because of the online and thank God for that but you need a house you need somebody that can pray for you <laughs> and can stand for you stand with you so I invite you to join our church today all right now let me pray again, and then I'll ask you to make a decision. I bind every force that brings confusion. I bind every force that speaks lies from blocking people from making life-changing decisions now. In Jesus' name, you are free to obey God. You are loosed <laughs> uh, from any holdback. In Jesus' name. If I'm talking to you with any of those things, one, two, or three, or one, two, or three, two, or three, one, um, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you, and I want to invite you, I'll, I'll not invite you, but help you make that connection. Is there anyone here that, Pastor, I'm not born again. I'm not walking with God. I need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I need to join a church. Is there anybody here? If you're online, um, Write us, you can, I guess, send it to whatever they got up there, and, and we'll minister to you too. Thank you so much. You know, people, people write us and tell us. Now, since there's nobody in here, I want to pray for your commitment to God, that this is not just another sermon, but some, something stirs you, stirs you. Father, I pray for the people that heard this, that don't need to make any adjustments like this, I pray that every single one of them will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, that the eyes of their understanding are open and enlightened, that they know what they need to lay aside, what they need to push aside, what they need to fix, what they need to trust God with, to set them on their feet and to release them into the future and the plan. That you said you have plans for us and they're good. I pray that every single one of them, my God, 
whatever happened in their past is just that, it's past, and they'll use it for rocket fuel to move forward in the future. So I thank you for the privilege of soaring into their life. I call them the head and not the tail, above only, not beneath, and I know some are getting 30-fold, some are doing 60-fold, and some are doing getting 100-fold out of what they say here, out of what they received here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me, please? Woo! Yes, 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 yes. Can you just thank God for, for what's going to take place in your life? For what, just thank him for what the changes you're going to make. Just, come on, come on. Now, everybody, make some noise or clap your hands. Let's thank God. I'm going to a different place. I'm, I'm leaving here. I'm going to be one that makes some to make the devil nervous. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you. And I've already blessed them in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy the sunshine. Get all your toys out.